if you desire to take a bit more control of your Android device but aren't you sure where to start, might we suggest looking at Android's built-in developer options. So let's jump into the video. First, open your settings app, scroll all the way down to find about phone or about tablet, scroll down again and find the entry with the build number. Start tapping on the build number section, Android will now pop up a message informing you that in X amount of clicks, you will become a developer. Keep tapping until the process is complete. With that, out of the way, head on back to the main settings menu and you will now see developer options listed. So very first is stay awake. With this option enabled, your phone screen won't ever turn off when it's plugged into a charger. If you need to keep Twitter or a similar app open for live updates and don't want to constantly tap the screen to keep it awake, these settings can help. Just note that if you have an AMOLED screen, you should be careful about leaving the screen on too long to prevent burn in. In Windows, you can use Windows Task Manager to see which processes are running. It can help you diagnose why your computer is running slowly and see which programs are using the most resources. Android doesn't have a solid equipment to this in the main applications menu, but this running service entry is closed. Running services lets you view how much RAM apps are using as well as currently apps on your phone. Don't be too stressed out by anything here. Android does a fantastic job at meaning RAM. You can stop this app to save some battery and you can do here is to check see which apps are running processes into the background which can help you identify battery sucking apps remember these ram booster and task killers are absolutely terrible so use this menu for information only so number three is select mock location app did you know that android is able to report fake locations instead of real ones the developer option settings actually requires a separate app to be installed to handle mock location such as fake GPS location or fake location. You have to enable the GPS, then you can pinpoint the coordinate around the world and press the start button and you are done. So the next time when you share your location on Facebook Messenger or any other social media app, the location you want will be shown. It means you can be anywhere in the world, at least you can make your friends think so. So number fourth is show tabs. When this option is enabled, a small circle appears on screen whenever your finger touches. This can be useful in two situations. The first is an accessibility feature. Those who have difficulty with precise motion might appreciate having feedback of where they are touching. Having these circles is also useful if you are creating a video as viewers will be able to see exactly where you are touching. Number fifth is force RTL layout direction. This should be helpful for left-handed people in case they find the regular LTR layout too difficult. Of course, if your device system language is one of that uses a right to left script like Arabic, the change from LTR to RTL is done automatically. However, Android allows you to force ATL layouts even when you're using a left to right language. Number six is animation skills. Depending on how fast your phone is, you might not notice them but Android plays an animation when opening or switching between apps using the window animation scale, transition animation scale and animation during scale. You can adjust how long these animations take. You can set each of these animation to be double the default speed anywhere up to 10 times as long or completely off. You will probably notice a difference no matter which speed you pick so, if you would like to make your device feel a bit snappier, try reducing the animation's time. However, I recommend you to select the scales at 0.5x even, which will make things twice as faster before and will give you the smoothness of animations too. The next option might help you if you experience graphical sluggishness in some apps. As of, Android now uses your device's dedicated graphic processor to render two-dimensional objects by default. So if you have any apps where graphics seems to be reducing slower than the rest of your apps, enable the force GPU rendering option. This will make sure that all apps take advantage of hardware acceleration feature. 
which should make the user experience much better. So the next one is Force 4X MSAA. If you are using a premium Android handset and want to give your games that extra little push, you can turn on some advanced graphical processing features. Activating these result in a smoother, better looking visual experience in certain high-end games and apps but you really need a phone on tablet with a decent GPU inside otherwise it might cause problems. Part of the reason why it is switched off by default. On the downside, all of this extra processing will usually drain your battery faster though the actual impact is given to vary from phone to phone. Keep an eye on the battery level if you enable this and decide you for yourself whether you think it's worth the compromise. On the next, we have very useful option called Show CPU Info. It will show you as an overlay on the top right corner on your device. You can now you see your CPU usage. On the next, we have a very cool option like Don't Keep Activities. The name itself is pretty explanatory. When this option is enabled, the Android OS will destroy an activity as soon as it is stopped. It will be very helpful to you if you have a really slow phone. If your phone just doesn't have much RAM, you might want to look into this option. Select Limit Background Processes. For instance, you can set this to two processes at the most, then only current app and the two most recent background processes will be allowed to run, which should free up a lot of memory on your device. In the last, we have a very cool option called Make All App Use Multi-Window Android Nougat introduced native multi-window mode but not all the apps support it. In fact, a lot of apps don't support it, which makes it not very useful. There actually a way you can force compatible with it. The new feature, all you have to do is to dive back into the secret developer options. Now you will be able to open any and all apps in multi-window mode. We should note that some apps may force close when you put them into multi-window mode apps don't support. It will say this app may not work with multi-window mode but most of them still work just fine. So that's it for the quick tutorial. I hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more these tech related kind of videos. I hope to see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye.